Have you ever wondered why we've never gotten a Star Wars CMF from Lego? Or what it could look like if they actually decided to make one? I put my own version of a Lego Star Wars CMF together and I want to show you exactly why I think we need Lego to make one and what figures they should include. I also want to talk about why Lego hasn't already gone and done this in the past and whether or not it's something they could do in the future. So let's dive right into things. In case you aren't familiar, a collectible minifigure series or CMF is a collection of minifigures that LEGO puts out a few times a year. In more recent years, there have been 12 figures in each series and they usually come with special molds, an accessory or two, and detailed printing. There have been more than 20 series of collectible minifigures from LEGO's own intellectual property and ideas, and we've gotten a number of others from licensed themes over the years as well. We've gotten CMFs from a number of licenses, including Disney, Marvel, Harry Potter, and the Muppets. So why hasn't LEGO made one for Star Wars? If you just give this question a quick Google search, you'll find the generally accepted answer, which comes from this article on Jay's Brick blog. Jens, who was the LEGO Star Wars design lead at the time, said, The rule in our contract with Disney is that we can make construction toys for Star Wars, and construction toys in this case is bricks. Minifigures are part of LEGO sets, and they need to contain a certain amount of construction, so we can't just sell minifigures. There was also a rule that sets had to contain so many pieces for it to count as a construction toy, so no, we cannot sell minifigures on their own. It's not something that we decide we don't want to do, it's just something we can't do. I know that this statement has been brought into question by others, and it definitely seems to contradict some of the things that have happened in the past. For example, we've seen poly bags for sale with individual LEGO Star Wars minifigures, and no more contents in the bag than what you would see with your average CMF. Ryan made a whole video about this topic a few years ago that goes a lot more in depth on this issue, so you can go check that one out if you're interested. Either way, I think it would be great to see things change. I know Hasbro owns the license for Star Wars action figures, but comparing minifigures to action figures is a pretty far reach in my opinion. I think that they serve totally different purposes. In my own use case, for example, I would never consider collecting Hasbro's Black Series figures in any significant quantity. Owning a bunch of these would take up way too much space and they just really aren't of interest to me for the most part. Lego minifigures are small and generally pretty detailed, but most importantly, they work with the Lego system. That's what makes a minifigure its own thing instead of it just being another action figure. I think it's pretty unlikely that I'll be including any kind of Black Series figure in any of my future builds. Overall though, I think it would be great to see things change with this issue in the future because there are so so many Lego Star Wars minifigures that could be made that probably just wouldn't sell super well in sets. Aside from a CMF though, it seems like Lego might have their own workaround for the time being. According to some credible leakers, it sounds like we're going to be getting some desirable minifigures randomly sprinkled throughout some of the sets that are coming out in 2024. Characters we've heard of so far include Darth Malak and Fives, who probably wouldn't have been put in their own sets otherwise. These figures are definitely desirable for big fans of LEGO Star Wars, but I would say that they're not as relevant to the more casual fan. So if LEGO's putting some more random but desirable minifigures in future sets, does that solve the issue here? I mean, I think it's going to be great to get some exclusive figures in next year's sets, but I still don't think this solution fills the gap that a dedicated CMF series would fill. Figures found in a CMF are almost always of a higher quality than what's found in a regular LEGO set, so I think it's disappointing that we don't get Star Wars figures that are at that caliber. Taking a look at this Moon Knight figure, for example, from the most recent Marvel CMF, we can see some great features. The printing is incredibly well done with side leg printing and arm printing included. It has a nice quality cape, custom weapons, and it's just about as perfect as a minifigure can get. Minifigure quality varies pretty significantly between different LEGO Star Wars sets. According to a recent interview with LEGO Star Wars designers, this is because they are limited to a certain number of surfaces that they can print on per year. Since LEGO hasn't or just can't do it themselves, I've created my own lineup of custom figures for a LEGO Star Wars CMF. Let's take a look at them and get into the details around why I think they would work so well. The first figure in my lineup is from Jedi Fallen Order, which is a video game that released in 2019. The main character in the game is Cal Kestis, and I picked up this custom version from Brick Tactical. It features UV printing on all surfaces except for under the arms, and I really like this design. I think a figure like this is perfect for a CMF because it may not sell super well in a set since he's from a more niche part of the Star Wars franchise. We got BD-1 as a buildable character, and it's from the same game as Cal Kestis, so I don't think it's impossible to assume he might appear in a set 
someday, but a CMF slot would work well to give fans of the game a detailed version of this character. If LEGO really wanted to, they could even dedicate a whole series to the video games which have tons of unique characters that I'm sure people would love to buy. Next up, we have the Mandalore Guard, which we see protecting Duchess Satine in the Clone Wars TV show. I think the custom one that I bought from Big Kid Bricks really nails it. It has great looking UV printing and an awesome 3D printed helmet with a custom weapon. I wish the texture of the paint on the helmet was a little closer to something LEGO would actually make themselves, but I think this character would be perfect for a CMF and people would probably buy a couple of them instead of just one. Another character that would be great to see in a CMF would be the Powen. Based on the one seen in the Skywalker Saga video game, this generic Powen comes from Grandpa Clone Customs. It's nothing crazy as far as molds go, but it's beautifully pad printed and it would be another character that I would love to purchase multiples of for the possibilities of customization and army building that come along with non-named characters. A LEGO Star Wars CMF would also be a great place for characters to make an appearance who got very little screen time. In this case, we have Ima Gundai, who showed up in just one episode of The Clone Wars. This version from Big Kid Bricks features a custom head mold with UV printing almost everywhere and a custom cloth piece. For the number of unique species in the Star Wars universe, there are so many possibilities for alien head molds that could be turned into Lego. When it comes to alien head molds, I like to collect them for mock building. So yeah, maybe I would buy a couple copies of a minifigure if it came with a cool head. I'm just saying. Anyways, speaking of weird alien heads, another character who only showed up on screen for a very short period of time is Yarael Poof. This Jedi Council member was also made by Big Kid Bricks. I would say he looks pretty accurate and obviously kind of freaky, but hey, this is another perfect option. He's an obscure character who would need a special mold and people probably aren't running out to buy a set just because this guy's in it. Perfect for a CMF. The next figure I'd like to see in a CMF would be Imperial Commander Cody. This version is from Clone Army Customs in their brand new style, which is made to more closely resemble LEGO's own design style. The pad printing looks great on this figure, and I'm a big fan of the way that CAC does their visors for their clones. I'm not sure that this character would make sense in its own set, but a CMF could be a great opportunity to offer what would basically be a high quality recolor of a figure they've made in the past. There are so many variations of clone troopers out there that I think LEGO could make a number of dedicated CMF series to just clone troopers if they really wanted to. I think Gregor would make the perfect addition to a CMF though. The version I have is also from Clone Army Customs and he has a clone commando helmet. This would require a new mold from LEGO, but they could get so much mileage out of a helmet mold like this that I feel like it would be a no-brainer to use a CMF slot to make it happen. Up next, I chose to include a character from the 2003 Clone Wars TV show. Sacy Tin shows up in other pieces of Star Wars media, but he has an especially awesome outfit that he wears here. This figure is from Big Kid Bricks and I really think they nailed the look of the helmet and design style with the prints. As far as I know, this outfit would technically be considered a Legends look for him, but hey, why not include Legends characters and make a whole CMF series with them too? They kind of did that with the Marvel What If series and there were some really cool figures that came from that lineup. Another fun character to see Lego take a stab at would be Edrio or Two Tubes. This is the last figure in my lineup from Big Kid Bricks where again, I think they did a great job here. He has an awesome headpiece with breathing tubes and the custom weapon is a super nice touch. Basically, I just want a lot of aliens, okay? Come on, Lego, give me some more. Next up, I have a character that we've seen from Lego before. Zam Wessel made an appearance in the 2002 Bounty Hunter Pursuit set, but the custom I have from Mayday Figs is just... Well, it's on another level, to be honest. To start with, I got this beautiful custom packaging when this figure came in the mail. Top-notch presentation here, and this figure comes with a second head, custom cloth pieces, the best pad printing I've seen from anyone, and it was sold for $36, which is a great price for everything that you get here. This is a CMF quality figure with all the extras that you get alongside it. Truly a new standard for affordable customs, if you ask me. I've actually got an extra one of these that I'm gonna be giving away soon on my Instagram so head over there and give me a follow so you don't miss out. The last two figures that I've included in my lineup actually didn't have any readily accessible or easy options that I could just order online. So I actually commissioned my friend Matthew to make these for me. If you want to order these commission figures for yourself, feel free to shoot Matthew a DM on Instagram. I'm sure he'd be happy to work with you. Wat Tambor is the foreman for the Techno Union, and we've never seen him in Lego form. This custom version may be a little bit over detailed compared to what we normally see from Lego, but I love it. I would imagine that Lego would probably just use the standard dress piece for their version of this figure, but I like the detail here. It perfectly represents the character, and I really prefer this version of the figure 
compared to just about all the other options I've seen on the customs market. The last figure in the lineup is Admiral Trench, who is a villain from the Clone Wars. Matthew killed it on the paint job for this figure. The 3D printed elements are from Venom Custom Brickworks, and the paint job really brings it to life. LEGO's probably stayed away from making an Admiral Trench of their own due to all the custom elements he would need, but I think they could execute on his design pretty well if they had CMF budget to play with. I would love to see pad printed versions of these figures because I think that would match LEGO's own quality more closely, but for now, I am super happy with these hand painted alternatives. I was actually hoping to include a custom Dexter figure in this video as well, but the 3D printed version that I ordered ended up snapping. I went to attach the leg at the connection point and ended up breaking off, so I didn't end up handing him off to be painted, and unfortunately I ran out of time. Let me know how much you think a pad printed custom Dexter should cost, because I haven't seen any good ones out there that are available. Even within this video, I paid wildly different amounts of money for all the custom figures that I gathered together. It doesn't seem like there's much of a baseline or anything like that within the customs world as far as price goes. At this point though, until LEGO steps in and actually increases the quality of the figures that they're offering, I think customs companies are going to continue to flourish. We're at a point now where customs makers can put out a product that is just as good as something that comes from LEGO, and in some cases it's even better. If LEGO can sort out their licensing thing or whatever they need to do to actually make this happen, I think the possibilities are endless for the number of CMF series we could get from Star Wars. Let me know in the comment section down below which figure you'd like to see in a CMF and why it would be a good idea. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I hope you have a good one.